In this video, we're just going to take a little bit of time to introduce uh, two-dimensional vectors, some notations, some terminology associated with them. Uh, eventually, we're going to ramp it up into three-dimensional vectors, do some calculations with these, try to do some geometric uh, interpretation based off of the geometry that's eventually going to be introduced. But this is just kind of an introduction to some of the notation and terminology that you're going to see associated with two-dimensional vectors in the coordinate plane. So a vector always has an initial point and a terminal point. Uh, so you see the initial point here is obviously point P, the terminal point is point Q, so initial point is where it starts, terminal point is where it ends. Uh, the reason why it's important to know which one's the initial and which one's the terminal is because the start and end points of the vector indicate the direction of the vector. So this vector is pointed upward and to the right, this vector is pointed to the northeast. If I wanted to uh, I wanted to try to come across and put a horizontal here. I don't really know why I'm not being able to do that at the moment. So we'll try this again. Don't, there we go, kind of. You know, I could, you know, try to do some work with trigonometry, try to find out what that angle is. So there are a variety of ways that you can describe a vector. Uh, according to your teacher, your professor, you're gonna wanna kinda hone in on what they do. Uh, but we'll just kind of be talking about some of the intro and some of the common notation throughout the remaining portion of this video. So vectors, we just said a few minutes ago, they, they have a magnitude and a direction, but what we didn't say in the last video is they don't necessarily have a location. All three of these vectors point the same direction, right? They all point to the northeast, they all point upward and to the right. If I wanted to figure out what the you know, the, the X component of this vector was, how far do I go from across from, I have no idea why that E just showed up, how far do I go across from the initial point to get beneath the terminal point, and then how far do I come down to, to make that connection, so basically figure out the rise over a run, uh, or the, the run and the rise. I can, I can determine that that's the same for all three of these vectors, and then therefore those vectors are all going to be said to be equivalent to each other. Um, so there's infinitely many ways to define one vector, right? The ordered pair that this one has as its initial point is a negative x and a positive y, and then it has a, a positive x and a positive y for the terminal point. Well, here's one where we start at 0, 0, but we still go across the same amount and up the same amount. So vectors definitely have a magnitude and a direction, but they don't necessarily have a fixed location. So if vectors have the same magnitude and direction, what you're able to argue is that those vectors are actually equivalent to one another. Um, what we have going on in this screen is a little bit of the notation that you're probably gonna see mainly in your calculus courses. We're gonna, as we continue this discussion over the next handful of videos, kind of be inserting some other notation that you might see more likely in a physics or an engineering course. But in a, in a lot of calculus courses, this is the most convenient way to define vectors, especially to start out. So if we define a vector uh, and, and we're just defining it as if it were an ordered pair, what shows that it's not an ordered pair is that our, our grouping symbols uh, that enclose the ordered pair have, have become these like pointy parentheses as opposed to the normal parentheses. So if you see this notation, what that's actually doing is it's defining a vector. And whenever you, you're not told that the vector starts here and ends here, you're just given a vector defined like we see right here, it's always assumed that that vector is gonna start at the origin. So this vector would start at the origin. Uh, the X component of the vector would be positive one unit. So I'm gonna come across one unit and then the y component of this vector would be positive two units, so that defines the terminal point, and then the vector itself is going to look like what I'm trying to draw here. I'm getting some lag right now, I don't really know why. Maybe I can do it with my mouse. My tablet is not really working at the moment. See the, the vector defined with the notation that we see being utilized right here. Uh, I can define an equivalent vector. Let's say that I wanted to say that a vector had initial point, uh, I don't know, let's go one comma two, uh, and then terminal point. As long as my x coordinate increases by positive one and my y coordinate increases by positive two, if I was to take these two ordered pairs, start the vector here and the vector here, I would see the exact same vector, right? And that goes back to what we said a little bit earlier in this discussion. Vectors have a 
a magnitude and a direction, but not necessarily a location. So the, the way that your vector is described might be you know, totally different. There's not really any way to, to show that these vectors are uh, congruent to each other or I, I guess the same vector uh, without investigating it a little bit. But as long as you have the same change in X and the same change in Y, regardless of the notation that's being used to define your vector, those vectors are said to be equivalent. Uh, one calculation that we'll talk about within this particular video is how to compute the magnitude of a vector. So the way that you're going to go about computing the magnitude of a vector is uh, pretty straightforward. We'll talk about what you see going on at the bottom of the screen here in just a minute. Uh, notationally, what we typically do to denote magnitude, I was going to try to put this in up here and I can't, uh, you do see it written in right here. So whenever you have, they, they look like absolute value symbols, right? So whenever you have these basically double absolute value symbols, this refers to the magnitude of vector A. Now, one other thing notationally that you might see happening, now I have everything in bold here so it doesn't really stick out as much as it would within a calculus textbook. What a lot of calculus textbooks are going to do to denote that something is a vector, uh, a variable is a vector, is they're going to bold that particular letter or that variable. Uh, in our writing, what we're probably going to want to do to denote that it's a vector, since it's difficult to boldface something that we're writing out, we're just going to want to use that little symbol above the variable in order to denote that it is a vector. And you see that that's what I do have within my, my already written in calculations here. So this is the same vector as before. And, and what we want to do is we want to determine the magnitude of vector A. Well, the, the magnitude of the vector is just the length of the vector. So we, we talked about this vector a few minutes ago on the previous screen and we said that it goes over one unit for the x change and up two units for the y change. So if I wanted to go ahead and actually draw in the, the rise and the run essentially, what I have is I have a right triangle and all I have to do to figure out what the magnitude of A is, is if I call that C, um, that's really the hypotenuse of the little triangle that we see drawn in here. So the magnitude of A is equivalent to uh, whatever the hypotenuse length from this right triangle is going to be. And if I go ahead and, and solve for that hypotenuse, right, here's A squared plus B squared. Well, that's going to equal C squared. I've obviously got to take the square root in order to solve for C. So in some of the videos that follow this up, we will take a look at adding vectors, subtracting vectors, uh, multiplying vectors by a scalar, and then we'll eventually talk about unit vectors.